In this video, we'll see how to find the inverse of a matrix by using Gauss-Jordan elimination. All we have to do is turn a matrix into reduced row echelon form, and by doing that, we're going to be able to find its inverse. We'll do two examples of finding an inverse matrix like this, and also see how this process could show us that a matrix is not invertible. But let's begin by seeing where the process comes from with a quick justification. We've previously proven that for an n by n matrix A, A being invertible is equivalent to the reduced row echelon form of A being the identity. Now, of course, we would like to perform our inversion algorithm on matrices that are invertible, and any such matrix necessarily has the identity as its reduced row echelon form. That means if we have an invertible matrix A, there's some sequence of elementary row operations, seen here, EK up to E1, that would produce the identity if we were to perform these elementary row operations on the matrix A. Then we can multiply both sides of this equation on the right by A inverse. That produces this equation. Then A and A inverse cancel out to the identity. On the right, the identity times A inverse is just A inverse. Then writing this equation in the opposite order, we have that A inverse equals this sequence of elementary row operations times the identity. This tells us exactly how to find the inverse of the matrix A. Those elementary row operations used to reduce A to the identity, exactly those operations can be performed on the identity to produce A inverse. It really is as easy as that. Here the algorithm is described. To find the inverse of an invertible matrix A, all we must do is find a sequence of elementary row operations that reduces A to the identity, so just perform Gauss-Jordan elimination, then perform that same sequence of operations on the identity to obtain A inverse. We see that in this equation. Those same operations on the identity will produce A inverse. Now, there's no reason to separate these two procedures. While we reduce A to reduced row echelon form, we'll perform those same operations on the identity, and thus we will finish with A inverse. Let me show you what I mean with an example. In this problem, we are asked to find A inverse if A equals this 3 by 3 matrix. The way we'll do this is to begin by augmenting A with the identity, I3. Thus, we've got A here, and then on the right, separated, we have the identity. Thus, while we reduce A to reduced row echelon form, we will simultaneously be performing exactly the row operations we need to on the identity, on the right side of this matrix, in order to end up with the identity on the left once we've reduced A, and A inverse on the right. I'm going to show you all of the row operations in this process, so you'll want to pause the video now and give it a try if you don't want to see the answer ahead of time. And here are the steps in the Gauss-Jordan elimination. As always, I refer you to my video on Gauss-Jordan elimination if you need a more thorough breakdown of how this works, but let me quickly walk you through the notation to make sure that's clear. Our first step, for example, is to subtract two copies of row one from row two in order to get this two to be a zero. We also subtract row one from row three in order to get this one to be a zero. That produces this matrix. And keep in mind that these operations we're performing on the rows, we do on the entire matrix, which includes the identity. You can see where we had the identity. It has now been changed by these elementary row operations. In the next step, we subtract two copies of row two from row one, and so on. The goal is to get the identity matrix on the left, turning A into reduced row echelon form. Again, we previously showed that if a matrix is invertible, a square matrix is invertible, that's the same as its reduced row echelon form being the identity. So if A has an inverse, then guaranteed this procedure is going to work. We're going to be able to get the identity on the left. And at the moment we do, we know that we have carried out this sequence of elementary row operations on the identity that will produce A inverse. So when we have the identity here on the left, we must have A inverse here on the right. 
Thus, the inverse of matrix A is this 3x3 three three matrix, and you are welcome to verify that yourself. If you multiply A by A inverse, which we just found, you will get the identity. Let's do another example. In this example, we are asked to find A inverse if A equals this 3x3 three three matrix. Again, we begin by augmenting the matrix with the identity, because whatever operations we have to perform on A to reduce it to the identity, we must perform exactly those same operations on the identity to produce A inverse. I'm going to paste the process on screen now, so if you want to give it a try yourself, pause the video. Here are the steps of the Gauss-Jordan elimination. For example, we begin by swapping rows 1 and 2, just to get a leading 1 here at the top. Then we add 3 copies of row 1 to row 3. That way we're able to get rid of that negative 3. Next, we multiply row 2 by negative 1 third in order to get rid of that negative 3 so that it turns into a positive 1, and so on. Introduce leading ones, eliminate entries below the leading ones, and then eliminate entries above the leading ones. In the end, we get the identity on the left, and at this point, it is A inverse that remains on the right. Thus, by performing Gauss-Jordan elimination, we found that A inverse is this 3x3 three three matrix. If you multiply that by matrix A, you're going to get the identity. Now, what would happen if we try to perform this process on a non-invertible matrix? In this example, we show that the matrix A is not invertible by trying to carry out this algorithm, performing Gauss-Jordan elimination, but then we get to this step where on the left, we have a row of zeros. Now remember, the algorithm is complete once we have the identity on the left, but clearly the matrix A is not going to get reduced to the identity. Its reduced row echelon form is not the identity, and so it's not invertible. So if we encounter a row of zeros during our Gauss-Jordan elimination, it is not possible to reduce this matrix to the identity. Its reduced row echelon form is not the identity, and thus the matrix must not be invertible. A is a non-invertible matrix. If it were invertible, its reduced row echelon form would be the identity, and by finding that, we could also produce its inverse, on the right side of this augmented matrix, but not possible. And that's how to find the inverse of a matrix using Gauss-Jordan elimination, as well as what it looks like when the algorithm fails. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and if you find my linear algebra videos helpful, please consider joining Rats of Math as a channel member to help support what I do and get access to exclusive and early videos, as well as my linear algebra lecture notes if you join at the premium tier or above. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind, two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count and calculus, I'm a V to the T, my parameter the rapidest, happens like this, my lectures the most Prominent, dominant, call me the Morgan, I get the compliments, the union in together like any time that we intersect, cause my opponents know they need.